you mentioned Fred Hurst being a child. Fred Hurst, he's in the Legion of Pianists along with Bill Charlap and, and, and a few of them who understand the meaning of artistry coupled with accompaniment. They understand it and they write that way too. They write in a vein that, that they're always thinking that one day a vocalist might sing this and I might have them. So not only do they leave space for the vocalist, they do melodies that are conducive and kind to vocalists. Kind of vocalists. There's some pianists who, um, like the Keith Jarrett's and that nature, who are, who are incredible what they do, but as a vocalist, you have to toe their line because their music is written for the ethereal mind. They're written for a place where vocalists really, they can't find their way there. Not because it's not written for them, it's just that they're not in the mix. So the question of what do I wish a lot of pianists would do? Well, if you're going to be partner with a vocalist, the first thing you have to understand, you have to be kind to the vocalist, because we are trained differently than you are. You're trained at the feet of instrumentalists as a pianist. You're in the legion of people that understand that what you do is create a sound through an instrument that is not of your own. So you have to somehow learn to marry yourself to that. And with that comes a disconnect when you're with a vocalist, because now it's a three-way street. Because now not only are you playing, you have to make that instrument, whatever it is, play along with you. And then in the middle, in the mirror of that madness or softness, you have to somehow remember there's a third person that you have to make room for. You'd be surprised, a lot of wonderful, wonderful pianists and accompanists have not understood that and they don't know when, when to lay back, when to lay back. Um, Fred Hurts, of course, Bill, they, they do, they do. That's why a lot of people do their material. And you know, you sit there as an audience member and can understand what they say and not drift off and go, I know they're saying something heavy. They're gonna come back to it, right? That, that, what, that know that the... As far as vocalists, what I wish vocalists would understand, I'm gonna twist that around, flip that around. Vocalists, as of late, now I'm not talking about of your, the Doris Days, the Dinah Washington, the Helen Newtons, the, 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 the Al Jarreau's, the Nancy Wilson's, you know, Diane Reeves. Uh, I saw Lisa Fisher last night who took the top of my head off and we'll get into that hopefully. My God, my God, that's another level. Vocalists have to understand that there is a song, when you're going to do a melody, when you're going to do a song, you must understand what the composer is saying if you have not written it. You must understand that there's a certain panache, a certain verb that you have to distribute to your audience and not just leave them in the dust and not just have them sit there and look at what you're going to do acrobatically with your voice, which comes later, if you can do that. Because Ella sang the melody first, then she went off into her thing and it was beautiful. Um, Kurt Elling does the same thing. He sings a melody first and goes off into his world, you know? But by then he has you and he's taking you on that journey. He's gently walked you that way. Vocalists now, especially younger vocalists, immediately want to take you to a place that you can't go with them. They want to show you what they've learned, what they've learned, which is fine. Unfortunately for them, in our genre of jazz, which isn't pop, rap, whatever it is, we're well schooled as an audience. We've heard A.V. Jefferson. We know John Hendricks, the Manhattan Transfer. We've heard Al Jarreau. We've heard Nancy Wilson. We've heard Doris Day, Louis Armstrong, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra. We've heard them. We've heard Nat King Cole. So basically what you're saying to me is you're preaching to the choir. Let me hear you sing the melody. I don't want to hear you mimic and show what you could do. I know what you, I know, I know what can be said. First let me hear the song. Then maybe I'll give you permission to do that. Vocalists don't understand that. A lot of young vocalists, they immediately want to show you. Really? Really? And I wish a lot of vocalists, I see the new guard is doing that. They're sitting at the feet of some of the masters and gleaning from them. And what they're gleaning is sing the melody all the way through first. Learn the lyric. And above all, and above all, if you're gonna have an accompaniment or a band, make sure the band is on the same page that you are. That's more important than anything. More important than you are. Don't come out and sing a wonderful song like Stardust and in the middle of their solo, they go into Scrapple from the Apple. You know, they, and then they go back into Stardust. Huh? You know, and that's what I feel needs to be said on both ends of the spectrum from instrumentalists, pianists, and vocalists.
Well, two skirts and a shirt. I love that performance. It showed me that I didn't know a lot. <laughs> I didn't know a lot about interacting with the female psyche on stage. Because being a male vocalist and playing with a lot of males, there's a certain machismo that comes with that, especially in our genre of jazz. We don't like to admit that, but it is. And so be a woman in this genre, not only do you have to be tough, you have to be at least twice as good as us to do what you do. You have to deal with a lot of the machinations of the industry that we have no knowledge of, because we're not women. I was invited by Renee Marie, wonderful vocalist, and Carla Cook, who I think is a purveyor of Dinah Washington and a lot of other artists, Roland in one. She's a wonderful tactician in what she does. And they came to me and said, we're gonna do a project called T-Skirts and a Shirt and we want you to be in the middle of us and we're gonna basically just rape you over the coals and have fun with you. I said, really? <laughs> he said, great, let's go. <laughs> and they picked the material. I did a couple of original songs I wrote for it, but basically they picked a lot of the material and it talked about, it talked about righteousness in America. And at first I thought it was gonna be a feminine air to it, but it was tough, it was wonderful. They, not only did they take me to task, I learned a lot of how to interact with two vibrant artists and to not, they didn't barrel over me, they didn't sing over me. It was a wonderful marriage of the three of us and we're gonna revive it hopefully in another year. Hey, I'm Alan Harris, and for more of these videos, go to jazztimes.com.